Welcome to Your Ink Story, a podcast exploring what humans have in common through the stories behind the body art folks wear. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, and I hope these ink inspirational short stories sharing the heart behind tattoos fascinate you and leave you feeling more meaningfully connected to humanity. This is Season 1, Episode 15, and our guest, Jasmine Godbolt, is an extraordinary entrepreneur who is making a difference in the world with her startup company, Nesting Nannies. Jasmine calls her ape tattoos ink therapy because each one is a special daily reminder to keep going, stay strong, be calm, focused, and centered, all while practicing self-love and embracing personal freedom. Welcome to your ink story, Jasmine. I'm so delighted you're here to share your ink story. How are you doing? I am well. I am happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy. Where are you located geographically? What part of the world are you in? So I'm currently in the Carolinas, North Carolina specifically. <laughs> oh, excellent. And Jasmine, before we dive into tattoos, would you please let folks know how you are glowing in the world? You are an entrepreneur and you're doing some remarkable work that is really helping folks. Let everybody know what you're up to. Yes, I'd be happy to. So thanks again for having me. My name is Jasmine Gobble, and I am the CEO and founder of a startup company called Nest and Nannies, where we provide educational drop-in child care service to student parents and working families. Oh, such important work. Nesting Nannies, everybody, you know, we've got the links in the show notes. You've got to check them out. And if you feel called to send some money, donate, help Jasmine and her team help more folks. So Jasmine, please share yes. with everyone your tattoo origin story. How old were you? What made you go out and get that first tattoo? I kind of remember it like it was yesterday. I know that's a cliche thing to say, but it's true. I do remember it like it was yesterday. It was on my 18th birthday in high school. And I remember I was so excited because I actually grew up in the church. So one of those origin stories where tattoos were very kind of like in the congregation I was in very frowned upon based off of the scripture that is kind of took in out of context from a lot of people who are overly religious. So I felt a bit condemned, but I asked my mom, I did my research. I looked into things on my own and she said, yes. So I'm like, if my mom says yes, and I'm validated by my own personal research, it's a go for me. So I remember carefully selecting the tattoo artist and then going there by myself for my 18th birthday to get my first small tattoo, which is on my wrist. <laughs> oh my gosh. And tell us a little bit about that wrist tattoo. So it says Selah and it means to pause and reflect. So it's just a very like reflective tattoo and piece of art that I have to always remind me within the busyness of the day, being an entrepreneur, just being a young adult. How old are you now? 26. Yeah. So I'm still so kind of like Gen Z, not quite millennial. Just Right. That You're right definitely, there. I've got, I've got yeah. one that's 25. <laughs> yeah. It's a great generation, the Gen Z. Yes. Just saying yes. listeners. Yes. So I definitely remember that day like it was yesterday, but I'm excited I got it and it kind of started my journey of all the other pieces of art that I have on my body. And so listeners, I forgot to share this right in the beginning. Do you know how I found Jasmine? Well, let me tell you. One of my favorite folks, Ruby Sunshine, she's the founder of the Financial yes, Joy Financial Joy School and, and Ruby helps families get very financially literate so we can change generational wealth trajectories, yes. right? And yes. she was amplifying Jasmine and her wonderful company, Nesting Nannies, on LinkedIn. And of course, there's Jasmine, and she's got these beautiful tattoos coming up in her arm. I'm like, hello, I need to yeah. know what's behind that body ache. So I pinged Ruby Sunshine and said, Ruby, please make an introduction. And Jasmine, you were so just delicious to be willing to come on the show and, and the podcast and let us know more about your tattoo stories. And so why was that phrase that you chose as your origin tattoo mm -hmm. so important, especially as a young woman at the age of 18? How did you have the inspiration to put that particular saying and feeling on your wrist? So I would say I was 
definitely the type of child to grow up early. So throughout all the chaos of school, just family situations, just being extra involved with different extracurricular activities, working. My first job was at the YMCA. I was always a very busy child and teenager. So pausing and reflecting comes it comes out of the Bible. That's kind of where I learned it from. So when I just think about pausing and reflecting, it kind of reminds me to be still and reflect on things, even when everything isn't going right. I think it's always good to just have that moment to just be still in the midst of a crazy world, crazy life, crazy world. So that was definitely the inspiration between getting sailor on my wrist. It's every time I look, draw or write or anything, it's just like, okay, and, girls. And did you know that. anybody with a tattoo? My mom had a couple tattoos, so I think that's why she was more prone to saying, okay, I'm okay with it, because she had her fair share of tattoos also. Not a lot of huge pieces, but she definitely agreed upon me getting my first one also, this nice, small, intimate piece. (laughs) Yeah, and so you said you did your research. I mean, my gosh, when I was 18, I wouldn't have even known where to begin, but of course, we didn't have the internet back in the dark ages. Uh, How did you find the tattoo artist and the tattoo store studio that resonated with you? I'm originally from South Carolina. So of course, I asked a couple of my friends who were older than me, who already had tattoos, as well as looking at the actual studios reviews, looking at their artists, their bios, shopping around, just how we would shop on Amazon and Target and all those things. I was reading their bios, looking at their work just to make sure it aligned with how I would want it on my body, understanding that this is a permanent decision. And (laughs) so I took it very seriously and I was definitely satisfied with what they provided me. Excellent. So what was it like when you first sat in there? Are you, and I can't remember who was asking this today on Instagram, but someone said, are you a watcher or are you a one who looks away? What, what, how are you? And you sat down in that first time, were you worried about any pain? Yes, definitely was worried about pain. And I like that phrase of a watcher or a looker away. I definitely was a watcher. <laughs> Since it was my first experience, I think that's a control factor that I have over me with just being kind of like, oh my gosh, this is permanent. This is never going to come off my body. So I was just watching them the whole time. But it was very, it was very fast also. Surprisingly, after they put the stencil up there, they just go to work. It was super fast for this. How long did it so, take? I believe probably like 30 minutes, if that. Yeah, probably not too long at all. It was like once they got everything done, they just buzzed away and then it was it was done. I think a lot of people are intimidated by the noise, but the pressure of the needle didn't hurt me as much as I thought it would. And that would be my advice to tell people who are interested in getting tattoos. You have to experience it for yourself. You can't base it off of what other people say, all the pinchers and TikToks. How bad does the pain hurt? How bad does it? No, you just have to experience it for yourself to see because some people's pain tolerance is different than others in mine. I learned like, wow, you can actually take some pain. So you know, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> And that's what I've heard too. And I've heard some people go in stages, especially when they're doing a big piece, they'll get Mm -hmm. some of it done and they'll come back and then they can only handle so much. And listeners, we want to know, were you nervous the first time you got a tattoo? Or if you're thinking about a tattoo, are you nervous about the pain? Let Mm -hmm. us know. Hop on over to Instagram in the comment section. It's at tell me your ink story or leave a comment wherever you're tuning in because we want to know about your ink stories or what you're thinking about with your tattoo. So let's talk about some additional pieces of art you got on your body. Please share. Absolutely. So I actually have eight pieces on my body. This was great homework prior to this show. Kind of allowed me to reminisce and reflect on the different pieces I have and how sentimental and just kind of the origin of them. So thank you for having me again to kind of reflect on that. I have a lot starting with my wrist, say la, it means to pause and reflect. I have a piece on my collarbone mm-hmm. right here in Arabic. Um, and it says always, always. So I'm really grounded and big on self-love and self-care. That's been a personal journey. I've entered in 2021, the healing journey and evolution journey of oneself. So it just reminds me myself to love myself always, always. And then I have a really big piece on my arm that you saw in the photo. And I'm pretty sure the audience will see in a photo. And it's based off of a Bible verse, Psalms 124, 7, like a bird in the air, you've escaped the snare, you've been set free. So it, it really reminds me of personal freedom. I 
definitely was one of the type of children and people to grow up in poverty and not have a lot. So just the goal of even myself with just becoming financially free in the journey of entrepreneurship, not just freedom financially, but also freedom mentally and all the other types of freedom is just a constant reminder to know and to understand that I've already been set free um, in this world. It's just up to me to kind of complete the steps and encounter the journey of growth and all the things. I have a, another huge one actually on my thigh. I can share that one. It's a big koi fish and a jasmine flower. I mean, a purity, uh, prosperity, good fortune, all the things. And, I love uh, that. Do you have color yes, on that one? I have, it's a very faint, like reddish pink, mm-hmm. but it's not like, you know, over the years right. it's kind of feeding out <laughs> um, through time. So yeah, it has a little bit of color in it, but not too much. I would definitely love a color tattoo one day. I think that sounds so powerful. First of all, the jasmine flower being you. And then the koi fish. What does the koi fish represent? Prosperity, good fortune, and all things like success. So that's kind of my intention with getting that. The placement was, because I think it looks good right there. It it wasn't any specific (laughs) intention behind placing on my thigh, but it it actually turned out good with just how it looks intertwined with the jasmine flower. So I'm excited about that. I also have one on my neck right here in uh, Chinese. It says it's just a peace symbol, a symbol of peace. Mm -hmm. I think everybody could kind of resonate with that nowadays just trying to keep your peace in such a chaotic world. Everybody has their individual stressors. So just that constant reminder, a lot to me to get the ink on my neck, just to constantly remind myself of keeping the peace as well as the a piece I have going down my back and my spine is the phases of the moon, which just reminds me of constantly evolving and how in life we go through plenty of phases. Um, and it's just a continual cycle. So that's why I got that one for. And then the last one, <laughs> look, I have so many. Um, one is on my arm right here is the in ceasing growth. So to grow without ceasing, without stopping, that really means a lot for me because on the journey of life um, that I'm learning in my short, year 26 years of living i definitely understand that if you're not growing if you're not moving forward you're going backwards so just growing without ceasing just reminds me like there's always room to learn there's always room to grow and to just make a difference and not get stagnant in your journey and where you are in life because you're not seeing the growth that you may want to have at certain stages but understanding that it'll come in divine timing, but just constantly work on self, that self-awareness. So a lot of my pieces are about self-awareness, kind of inspiration, motivation to just be your best authentic self, no matter what society says, and to get you to the place of success where a lot of people are working towards nowadays is becoming successful. Oh my gosh, right listeners, 26 years old, our Jasmine is. <laughs> And I'm seeing you as a keynote speaker, you know, going around and inspiring everybody because these are the things that we need to hear, right? Mm -hmm. We need to know and be Mm -hmm. reminded that life is a cycle. That whole, this too shall pass, it really is true and it evolves. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is as we evolve in those cycles, we get to a bigger and better place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times things that haunt us they're there and we talk to them and we know they're there and we hold their hands, but we don't let them rule us. Right. And so a lot of what you're doing is like, these are my intentions for my life. This is not only how I want to live my life. This is what I want to achieve. I want to strive for, and I want to have an impact. I want to be a guiding light for others and representation for others and how to get up and out and create that self-expression and you're bringing jasmine to us and all your full gorgeous glowing goddessness way which is so (laughs) delicious and wonderful (laughs) but you're doing the work that you know Mm -hmm. the tattoos help remind you too about your purpose and about who you are and the self-love i mean that's just a daily practice for all of us As humans, worthiness is where we can really get stuck, right? And especially as a founder, folks, when you are building a business, there's no evidence ever that you're going to succeed. You have to go on pure faith and conviction and commitment. And Jasmine, I applaud you. And I see that these beautiful pieces from loving yourself to understanding that prosperity Mm -hmm. and success is based on what you want 
and really, and that evolves too, right? right. So what was right. a successful milestone a year ago will be different next year. You're absolutely right. Oh, I'm so excited. And a reminder to listeners too, do not judge your right. desires or your desires. So often we, we think that we're not worthy because we haven't achieved like someone else has achieved. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? And it can be whatever that looks like for you. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Listeners, Jasmine's going to send me some pictures. And as you know, I, I launched every episode on Instagram. You will find the real that will show the tattoo. So you can go, oh, I see what she's talking about. Oh yeah, there's that koi. There's that Jasmine. There's the peace symbol. And we can have the deeper connection from all of that. And how... I'd like to bring all these beautiful eight tattoos together and how having them there has enhanced your life. Mm, yes. I would definitely say at times where my spirit might be low with just a journey of entrepreneurship and just a journey of self, that self-discovery, all the shadow work, it kind of just serves as reminders. You know, I'll look at myself after a great long day shower and moisturizing my skin and just relax and it's like, okay, yes, peace, love yourself always. It's just all constant reminders uniquely and authentically to myself that remind me daily to just keep putting myself first and just to keep going um, for it. And they're also great conversation starters, might I add, with strangers, especially during the warm seasons, your springs, your summer times, like when we go to the beach and a pool and have the bikinis and all the things, people are like, oh, wow, I like your tattoos. Like, what do they mean? So it's just a lot of great conversation starter uh, pieces that you just never know what you have in common with other people or how they're inspired by your art on your body and what it means um, to and how it can inspire them. So definitely. Uh -uh. I'm so me. happy. And, and listeners, those of you with tattoos, how do folks respond to your ink? Mm -hmm. We want to know, come on over and, and join the conversation over on Instagram or wherever you're tuning in. Yeah. We'd love to know what it's been like. And how, Jasmine, how would you like to see the perceptions, the judgments, the thoughts about tattoos change? Yeah, that is such a great question. I would love to see the perceptions change by individuals who it might not be their thing just understand it really might just not be your thing but it might be others things you know people thinking they're unprofessional people think you have to cover them up people thinking all the things except for what they are i believe that tattoos uh play a whole a huge role in society because it's a way of self-expression it has it allows people to express themselves however they find valid and some of them might be huge pieces on their face to their chest to their just a small little piece on their wrist that it could be sacred to them some of them on their private parts i'm not judging i'm okay with that with anybody who can't go anywhere so i think tattoos make you really authentic it makes you unique nobody's yeah. tattoo i mean some people can get the twin tattoos and things similarly but they'll always mean something different to each individual who has it so the perceptions of thinking that they're unprofessional, that they should be hidden, covered up. I think we're just living in a generation now where people just don't, they don't care. And they just know that their tattoos do not define them, especially in different industries and workspaces. So with me being in the childcare industry with little children, they actually love my tattoos. They're like, Miss Jasmine, what does that say? This is so nice. This is so nice. So they just love it, you know? So um, I would definitely say that as my response to that question. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I just, get, oh, in fact, you get to work with those children, those precious yes. little treasures. That's yes. so wonderful. And it's true. Yeah. We, we are getting to a point where our individuality and how we express yes. ourselves is just, we're having op more open hearts toward each other in that way. And we need to do better as well. And folks, you may remember Dr. J in episode six, he's full leg sleeves, arm sleeves, chest, throat, et cetera. And he's a professor at a major university here in Boston. And he likes to always show up that first day of school in shorts and a short sleeve shirt so that all the students can judge away <laughs> and then shift, right? And then folks, if you remember in episode eight with wonderful Christian Thomas, who he got his first tattoo Jasmine on his neck and it said, respect. 
Wow. <laughs> I love and that. That's, and that's the point. I love that. You know, when you get out of the shower, you're moisturizing up and there's your reminder for yeah. your journey and to show up as the queen that you are in your Thank life. You way to go i've got the clappers and the thumbs snapping over here folks <laughs> so, well, do you have plans for getting another tattoo oh my gosh yes i call it also ink therapy <laughs> a lot of people who get tattoo pieces call it that because it's just something therapeutic about getting a tattoo whether that be a hardship somebody went through to have a piece to remember somebody or something Something, again, like myself, to remind you as a constant reminder to stay motivated and to love yourself. So hopefully before the year ends, I have a, a lot of other pieces in mind, like a huge back mural, a couple of my legs. I, fun fact, I don't have any art on my like legs or feet or anything. I know those are nice, but I wouldn't knock it, you know, so I definitely see myself getting some more ink in the near future. Excellent. I love that ink therapy. Oh yes. my gosh, it's Ooh, so yes. true. Feeling blue, go get another tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and listeners, if you need inspiration, you've got to hop on over to Tell Me Your Ink Story on Instagram because I'm constantly sharing some Master Ink's incredible artwork mm. and celebrating tattoo artists from around the world. There's a woman mm. out of France who does pets like wow. I've never seen before. They're so real. Mm. They bring a tear to my eye when I see them. So listeners, mm. be sure to join us over there on Instagram and certainly as well on TikTok. And I know Jasmine, you're on TikTok with, mm -hmm. with the nesting nannies, as well as your own personal TikTok channel. So that's mm. wonderful. Do you have a tattoo artist you'd like to give a shout out to right now or, or you are agnostic you'll go to one when you're in the mood and another when it's time for each piece that's definitely definitely one of those type of people where i just go to a different one i just like to do my research just to make sure that they are credible and their work looks good <laughs> um but i kind of move around a lot so i would just look up a local tattoo studio or ask around with different right. friends in my network like hey do you know any good artists do you know any good studios and they refer me to someone so i'm new to the area that i'm living in now so i'm actually going to have to embark on that journey of <laughs> finding a new artist soon so i don't have any specifically to shout out but each person who has done one of the pieces on myself definitely made me feel comfortable and they executed their job well so oh. um, definitely great for all of them it's been a lot is of that, <laughs> is that a ceo for you right there founder going and they executed their job very well yes <laughs> Very well, honey. Very <laughs> so thank you to all the people. I love that. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to show all your beautiful tattoos to everyone. Listeners, you know how to find us. Uh, yeah. The reel will be, of course, on Instagram, but you can also find it on YouTube and you can find it TikTok. And so you can celebrate and get in inspired by Jasmine's beautiful tattoos. Mm -hmm. Jasmine, thank you so much for sharing your extraordinary ink stories with us. I'm so grateful for your inspirational insights about the art of tattoos and oh, the beautiful heart behind your tattoos. I know you have helped us connect more deeply with each other during this wonderful conversation. And thank you so much again for having me and sharing my ink story. <laughs> oh, that's great. Everybody, be sure to visit Nesting Nannies, add some wind to Jasmine's sales with her wonderful business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Your Ink Story. Please rate and review this podcast wherever you are tuning in. And if this episode inspired you, please share it so we can all feel more connected through our common humanity and lived experiences. If you or someone you know would like to share a meaningful ink story on the podcast, please send me an email, andy at yourinkstory.com, along with a brief description. Feel free to share your thoughts about this episode via a voicemail message by visiting yourinkstory.com. And when you get to the website, just tap the podcast mic icon located in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and leave your message. Until next time, I'm wishing you a delicious day everywhere you glow. Cheers.